Laws are hard to read. I think that laws should be at least a little bit harder to read. And I think that we'd all be uh, maybe a lot better off. And I'll try to convince you, but first I'd like to tell you just a little bit about myself. Uh, as you've heard, I'm passionate about games. I'm passionate about computer programming. And I'm passionate about the law. What do those three things have in common? Rules. I'm a guy who likes rules. Not rules for their own sake, but what rules are capable of creating. Like the rules of Go. Go has eight rules, give or take. You can express them in about 100 English words. Fits on a business card. The tiny set of rules has generated, so far, 3,000 years of people playing and winning and losing and teaching and learning and growing and fun. I think that the rules of Go are a masterpiece of rule writing. I like rules, so I like computer programming, which is essentially just giving rules to a rule-following machine. And eventually, my love of rules brought me to law school, where I was awash in rules. Rules about how to write rules, rules about how to read rules, and rules about when other rules should be overruled. You'd think it had been great, but there was a problem. There is a problem. Because I learned computer programming before I learned the law. And now when I read written legal rules, I get this uncomfortable feeling. I get this feeling that there's a missed opportunity here. And I'd like to share that opportunity with you. But first, if I could, I'd like to try and share that feeling with you. Who's winning this game of poker? All right, you can stop. It's the hand on the left. That's not important. What's important is while you were trying to figure it out, did you have that little voice in the back of your head that was telling you, this is, why is he making this harder than this needs to be? This is suboptimal. There is a better way to do playing cards, right? That's the way that a computer programmer feels whenever they read a law or a contract. Why? Because computer programmers learn multiple languages. They learn that languages are tools, and you should choose your language based on the task in front of you. And for laws and for contracts that are written in natural languages like English and French, it's just really obvious that this is the wrong tool for the job. Let me show you why with a little math quiz. Ready? What is three plus four multiplied by two? Come on. Okay, I heard some 14s. Totally different question. What is three plus four multiplied by two? 11. I said the exact same words twice. Now, what's interesting to me here is that we can all agree because we know the syntax and the semantics of math, that the right answer for the second question is 11. What's interesting to me about the first question is not what the right answer is, but whether we can realistically say that it has one. Everybody said 14. So does it have a right answer? Is 14 a good answer and 11 a good answer? Yeah, I think so. I think they're both reasonable interpretations of that statement, which is great. If what you're trying to write is a kind of mathematical poetry, I guess, but if the difference between 14 and 11 is important, then a natural language is not the right tool for the job. The great thing about natural languages is that they allow you to say literally anything. The great thing about constrained languages, like computer programming languages, or like math, is that when you say anything, it can only mean one thing. And law, like math and like 
computing, computer programming is an area where knowing exactly what the words mean is really valuable. So this sense of frustration that I had eventually led me back to the university where I'm now a student in computational law. And part of my research is looking at languages other than natural languages that are good for expressing legal concepts and what it's possible to do with them. When I say that laws should be harder to read, I mean they should look more like this. Isn't that beautiful? Doesn't it look like a typographical yard sale? <laughs> it's a mess, but it's wonderful. It's a programming language called Ergo that was designed specifically for expressing legal concepts. And I think, I think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I'll explain why. This, like the rules of Go, is a masterpiece. It was originally expressed with wood and paint. There's no wood and paint here today. The original masterpiece has been translated. It's been translated into a language of color codes and pixels. And that language has been written down in a computer file that's on a computer over there somewhere, I think. I can't read that language, and neither can you. We can't read JPEG, but we don't need to. The computer can read it, and the projector can display it, and we all don't have to go to France to see it. What I'm talking about here is not revolutionary. It's digitizing information taking information and turning it into a format that a computer can read and write and can use to do useful things. We've done it for pictures, we've done it for video, we've done it for audio, we've done it for documents and what used to be called typesetting. But it hasn't come to law. Because the law isn't about documents, the law is about rules. We haven't digitized rules. I think the reason why not is that people just aren't aware of what you can do. So let me give you an example of that. As a lawyer, my client will come to me and they'll say, Jason, I want this legal outcome. I want to comply with this law. Give me advice. Tell me what to do. So the client has the legal outcome they want. I'm supposed to know what the law is. And then I take those two and I calculate out what the person should do. What facts should we create so that if and when the horrible thing happens, you end up in court, you're going to be found in compliance with that law? I wanted to see if I could use this programming language to get computers to give legal advice in the same way. Now, to be certain that it was giving good legal advice, I went and I took a famous Supreme Court intellectual property case. And I took those three elements from that case. The legal outcome of that case, I imagined, okay, this is what my client is asking me to ensure happens. So I took that legal outcome and I encoded it in the programming language. And then I took the law that was referred to in that case, or at least a subset of it, and I encoded that into the programming language. But I didn't want to just tell my software what the answer was. So I wrote the software so that it would understand a wide array of possible fact scenarios across six different variables. And then I asked the software, what should my client do? What is your advice? And I thought to myself, this experiment will be successful if the computer tells me that what my client should do is the same thing that the people had actually done in that court case. Makes sense, right? So this is what it actually looked like. Again, it's not pretty, uh, it's not easy. But the important thing to know is that I didn't tell the computer how to figure this out. All that I did was translate the law into a programming language and translate the desired legal income into a programming language and give the computer a framework of possible fact scenarios so that it could generate random ones. I didn't tell it how to do the mental math involved, I just translated. So did it give me the right answer? Yes and no. 
it gave me three options. So initially I thought, oh, I've, I've fouled this up. But I checked, and one of those three options was exactly what had happened in that court case. So then I checked the other two options, and they were right too. There were three ways within those six variables of getting that legal outcome. I was only aware of the one. I was just hoping it would find the one, but it found all three that existed out of hundreds of possibilities. Could I have done that for my client? Yes. It would have taken me at least a few hours. It took the laptop 30 seconds. So what can you do if you digitize rules? Well, you can tell the software what you know about the law, and then the software can tell you what you don't know about the law. You can automate legal advice giving, which just suggests a huge, huge range of possible applications. I think the best way to understand where the legal profession is right now is by comparison to the profession of accounting. It's possible, but hard, for an accountant to use a computer programming language to get the computer to do math for them. And like my experiment demonstrated, it's possible, but hard, for a lawyer to get a computer programming language to get a computer to do legal reasoning for them. Spreadsheets came along, and all of a sudden it was easy for accountants to get a computer to do math. Some analogous thing that I call the killer legal app is coming. And it is going to make it easy for, computer, for lawyers to get computers to do legal reasoning. When that happens, the history from accounting tells us that everything changes. The cost of most, if not all, legal services will go down. For some legal services, it'll go down to zero. New kinds of legal services that didn't exist before because they would have required the lawyer to sit thinking for too long. Those kinds of legal services will come into existence. And far from the robots are coming for our jobs fear, the demand for lawyers is actually gonna go up because lawyers are gonna be able to do more, they're gonna be able to do it more efficiently, and they're gonna be able to do it more accurately. That's what happened in accounting. Now, the killer legal app isn't here yet. There's some people working on it, but it's not here yet. It's coming. And when it comes, we need to digitize laws for it to work. As long as we are taking laws that are written in an unrestrained natural language, that process of digitizing them is going to be needlessly difficult. Like playing with a crappy set of cards. Making laws harder to read is not a thing in and of itself that we want. Making laws harder to read is the price of something that we want. It's the price of finally bringing the legal profession into the digital era. And I think it's a price well worth paying. Thank you. <laughs>